uh, females even during pregnancy and uh, uh, because of subnautical change in their urinary system uh, as compared to males they have a high risk of getting uh, urinary tract infection and uh, today we are going to discuss the urinary tract infection including the uh, ascending uh, uh, infection may start from urethra to bladder then ureters and then even to the kidney so that is called the uh, whole of the urinary tract infection what are the uh, prespreading factors and what are the uh, how would you investigate and what are the symptomatology of the patient and the management so basic objective would be just to check list of the lower urine and the upper urinary tract infections and they define the what is the infection itself how would you make a diagnosis of uh, uti and uh, what is the pathophysiology of the urinary tract and uh, what the risk factors for having a patient to get urinary tract infection especially people who are diabetics and females and or immunosuppressive therapy with uh, reduced immunity and then how would you diagnose a urinary tract infection whether it is a, a low tract infection or a upper tract infection including pyelonephritis and what is the management and treatment of uh, the UTI so we can see the anatomical uh, position of the kidneys and the ureters and uh, you can see the kidneys here the ureters and you have a, a bladder and then you have a urethra so this is the whole anatomical uh, position of the kidneys ureters bladder and the ureters in males and in females you can see the kidneys again with the, the urinary uh, ureters they take uh, the filter uh, concentrated urine from the kidneys the glomeruli and then it comes to the uh, bladder through the opening of the ureter these are small openings of the ureters in the uh, bladder and you have a excretion through the ureter so urinary tract infection is an infection in any part of the urinary system that means it may be a urethritis cystitis ureters uh, infection or may be ascending to kidneys that is called pyelonephritis so uti may be limited to a lower urinary tract or to the upper urinary tract may have ascending uh, infection leading to pyelonephritis so uti is common particularly in women most of the occurring in the ur normal urinary tract and we as cystitis half of all women will experience uti in their lifetime so this is a very important part of uh, uh, infections like uh, uti especially in pregnancy when they have a high risk of uh, especially diabetic uh, female they get uh, uti very common and uh, this infection can be complicated or uncomplicated uncomplicated means there is no underlying anatomical structural or functional abnormality of the patient's genital urinary tract and while complicated means there may be some underlying structural disease of the urinary tract may have a stricture may have a, some uh, anomalous uh, ureteral position in the uh, bladder or may have other anatomical uh, problem uh, may be acquired or uh, inherited or they may be functional abnormality of the genital urinary tract so complicated means there is some underlying condition either stricture or some uh, other anatomical problem which can lead to high risk of uti while uncomplicated host is the uh, normal patient who don't have any underlying structure or functional abnormality of the urinary tract so this that should be very clear i uh, just uh, explain again uncomplicated host uncomplicated host means that person is normal he is not having any underlying structure or functional abnormality of the urinary tract while complicated host is that one who have some structure or functional abnormality of the urinary tract and he is a high risk of getting infection like if we say any patient who had uh, subacute bacteria endocarditis the patient who have some underlying valvular heart disease they have high risk of getting 
uh, and the card artists uh, as compared to people who have a normal balance. So same is the true here. Patient who have UTI, the people who have structural or functional abnormality of the urinary tract, they have a high risk of getting UTI. These are called complicated host. While uncomplicated hosts are those which have no structural or functional abnormality of the urinary tract, but by chance, if they have some uh, instrumentation, some uh, follies that are being passed, they have stroke, they have uh, some diabetes or other problem, they can have UTI. So uh, it is uncommon in men and children. So basically, it is more common, UTI is more common in female, especially who have some underlying urinary tract problem. No. UTI is not always uncomplicated. I told you uh, it is a complicated host is that one which has some abnormality in the urinary system. Either it is a structural abnormality or some functional abnormality. While patients uh, who are uh, having UTI, they had the normal uh, urinary tract, they are called uncomplicated. So, recurrent infection causes considerable morbidity. Infection can lead to life threatening drama, neck disabilities. The so most common uh, infection is uh, by E. coli, and they can cause drama, neck disabilities, kidney failure, and can lead to pyelonephritis and renal shutdown. And it can be a so infection can be a low risk, low uh, urinary tract infection like urethritis or cystitis. It can be upper tract infection leading to pyelonephritis. So sometimes UTI may have a urethritis in males or may have prostatitis or cystitis leading to ascending infection through the ureters leading to involvement of the kidney that is called pyelonephritis. The most common it is a ascending infection leading to uh, uh, kidney itself. So growth of uh, 10 is by square five information parameters from mid stream that is very important you have to collect a urine from mid stream normal specimen for uh, diagnosis of uti in symptomatic patients even small number of bacteria may also be diagnosed as uti so this is a uh, number of uh, organisms per ml but if patient is having uh, burning maturation he is febrile he is dysuria and urgency and potency of urine and he has a small amount of organism in the urine per ml, and that can be a, uh, a UTI. So, what are the uh, etiological factors? What are the most common bacteria and uh, organisms which are involved in UTI? So, specific bacteria like who they produce granuloma, especially TB. Tuberculosis bacilli is a, a bad infection that is. Uh, once it is back to the unit track, it can lead to a general mass, then can do, lead to even damage of the kidneys. And a uh, patient will have uh, sterile pyuria, that is called sterile pyuria. They are unable to grow the, the own, own culture, routine culture. But if you specifically ask for uh, uh, culture for tuberculosis bacilli, then you can have the culture uh, positive, but usually it is uh, uh, urine is sent for uh, uh, complete examination and uh, culture and sensitivity. So it is not checked for uh, work for best life. So urinary tract infection, ascending infection, even pylon fractures due to uh, tuberculosis uh, uh, kidneys can lead to the granulometer cyst formation in the kidneys and leading to. Uh, auto nephrectomy that is called auto nephrectomy that sterile pyuria is uh, very uh, significant finding in uh, tuberculosis uh, pyelonephritis. Then you can have uh, uh, sexually transmitted infection like syphilis and fungal infection. They can have uh, dendroma formation and zuma, uh, then then other uh, neurological and uh, cardiovascular manifestation. If, disease is not treated in the early phase. That is some of the uh, acquired diseases uh, through urinary tract, they are uh, uh, sexually transmitted infections. And uh, non-specific E. coli, these are the commonest uh, bacteria which are the negative bacteria, they are found in urinary tract causing UTI. And Klebsiella, Proteus and Enterobacter, uh, especially 
these are the uh, common bacteria if we look at the parasitic infection which has yeast and the echinococcus can be a source of infection and protozoal especially trachomonas vaginalis is uh, common in the females causing the vaginal discharge false meaning discharge and uh, causing uti helminthic infection in worms or uh, entire of yes these are the other other uh, cause of uh, uti now if we uh, talk about the uncomplicated uti right? i told you uncomplicated uti host is the one who does not have any structure or functional abnormality of acting by itself but they have infection on a normal uh, renal tract so uncomplicated uti is usually considered to be cystitis or polymorphic that occurs in three renal causal adult women with no structure or functional abnormality of the tract they are not pregnant and have no significant morbidity that could lead to a problem so usually this is the uh, normal host which can have uh, urinary tract infection but complicated uti can involve either section at age and uti is considered complicated if the patient or a child is ha ha having infection a child and a pregnant woman that is another uh, they can have complicated uti especially during pregnancy and children and uh, other patient who have a structure of functional abnormality and a suction of the urine flow by some structure formation some renal calculi or other anatomical uh, dysfunction of the urinary tract comorbidity decreases the risk of uh, acquiring infection or risky treatment such as that is so these are the diseases which can lead to excessive uh, uh, uti risk that can be in especially in diabetic patient patient who have chronic renal disease who have uh, uh, immune compromised uh, state patient on steroid patient on cytotoxic drugs and patient with hiv these are the people who are have compromised immunity and a high risk of uh, infections like uh, opportunistic infection may have pneumonia and even uti so recent instrumentation or surgery of the new practices is very important part of uh, iatrogenic infection especially people who have like a patient you are working in the uh, uh, emergency a patient with uh, diabetes or hypertension comes with sudden onset of unconsciousness he may have some cerebral hemorrhage stroke or uh, may have history of fever with uh, uh, fits and the patient unfortunately may have uh, meningitis and cerebral cerebralia or patient is comatose and do you have to what is your nicotine so catheterization of the patient is very very important in the case of the condition these are the very common section introduced by uh, our uh, uh, staff if you don't observe the uh, aseptic condition because these uh, catheterization instrumentation and urinary tract surgery can lead to a bad infection that can last for Uh, years and uh, can cause of recurrent infection or even can cause structure formation and other complications. So be uh, uh, careful when you are putting a, a folic catheter in a patient, and it should be proper aseptic technique uh, uh, that is uh, going to affect the outcome of the patient if you if they get the UTI. While recurrent infection, recurrent infection usually. the ascending infection that uh, uh, causes uh, uh, infection uh, from the urethra to the uh, upper urinary tract especially you if you uh, patient had a immune compromised say diabetes and other uh, uh, diseases which uh, reduces the immunity atrogenic i told you these are the infection which are usually introduced or they are acquired infection which are uh, either part of uh, instrumentation and in surgery catheterization or other procedures even cystoscopies are done they they can lead to iatrogenic infection in metagenic spread if patient is having the septicemia bacteremia can lead to it may have some uh, gi uh, abnormality may have rupture the 
intestine because of uh, or may have peritonitis leading to septic you know? so these are the infections uh, hematogenous spread through blood borne they can lead to UTI lymphogenous spread these are infections to a lymphatic system can lead to uh, UTI and extension from the neighboring organs so you can see we have seen the structural uh, position of the bladder, ureter, and the kidneys. The surrounding structures like your gut, your rectum, gut, and your uh, abdominal structures can be a source of infection. Patient is uh, immune compromised, like patient have a diabetes, patient have a, uh, cirrhosis, patient have coronavirus disease, or or or, or they have some uh, immune compromised state and. Uh, next is how the these infection they, they takes place from a focus in lacking like or prostate. So prostatitis in males can be a source of infection, and uh, they can cause uh, high grade fever, with chills and high grade dysuria, bunny maturation, and that can be a source of ascending infection leading to uh, cystitis, urethritis, and pyelonephritis. So these are the common uh, sources of infection which can lead to uh, UTI, urinary tract infection. Okay. If we look at, look at the uh, anatomical uh, structures of the kidney, the ureter, and the uh, urinary bladder, and the urethra, and uh, these are the, I told you, these are the usually a ascending infection which uh, takes place in the uh, kidneys, in the urinary tract infection. And uh, if we look at the contamination of the uh, periurethral area with the urethra uh, pathogen from the gut. So this is the infection which can take place from the urethra. Either it is uh, through sexual intercourse, by just sexual transmitted diseases, some uh, instrumentation, or some uh, other uh, uh, kind of infection that can lead to urethritis. And then the colonization of the urethra and migrates to the bladder. Then you can have cystitis that can lead to infection of the urinary bladder itself. And then you have ascending infection. What happens is there is a colonization and invasion of the bladder and mediated by the pili and the adhesion. So adhesion takes place and the localized infection happens in the uh, uh, urinary bladder. And you can have inflammatory response in the bladder, fibrillary combination in the texture. So this is the uh, how the infection they, uh, starts from the uh, urethra, urethra and uh, then they have this start sending to the upper tract and leading to uh, urethritis, leading to cystitis, colonization within the uh, within the uh, urinary bladder and uh, leading to cystitis and then you can have uh, uh, ascending infection and the neutrophilic infiltration, then bacterial multiplication and immune system subversion. So that is the immune system is uh, compromised and you have a at ascending uh, infection, reduce immunity, and the patient can have severe infection of their whole urinary tract. So, starting from the urethritis, you can have uh, cystitis, then you can have bladder, uh, urinary bladder infection, and you can have ascending infection leading to your uh, uh, biofilm formation and epithelial damage by the bacterial toxins, proteases, and ascension to the kidneys so this is how the ascending infection can take place starting from the urethritis to cystitis then ascending infection to the urinary tract and then you can have the uh, pyelonephritis so this is the whole tract kidneys ureter urinary bladder and the urethra so whole infection can take place through the uh, once you have a, a ascending infection now, what are the uh, uh, ascending uh, sources of infection? Uh, I just told you can be uh, 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 okay. So, what is the innate host? What are the defense mechanism which really ha we have in our body to combat against urinary infection? So, this is the, if you look at the urine. Urine is highly acidic, intolerable by pathogens. So high acidity, acidic uh, media of the urine is a, a, a protective for the UTI. And a high urine osmolality is another factor that prevents uh, any person from having uh, urinary tract infection. 
Urinary inhibitors of bacterial adherence. This is another endothelial lining of the urethra, your bladder, and they protect the person from having UTI. And uh, anatomical physiological changes if, if someone is having uh, property inhibitors attachment to the urethral cells. I told you they have a special kind of protective layer that can pre prevent the patient from having a urine tract infection and continuous flushing of the urine slope. So this is a, uh, you have a continuous filtration from the kidneys and urine is being formed and passed to the urethral and the bladder and you have a reservoir in the bladder and you pass the urine out. So this is the, uh, your urine pH. Urine pH, urine osmolality, the inhibitors of urine bacterial adherence, and competitive inhibitors of attachment of your epithelial cells and continuous urine flow that can prevent someone from having urinary tract infection. If we look at the mucosal immunity, urethelial uh, urethelial secretion of cytokines and chemokines. So these are the protective immune uh, system which can uh, uh, prevent this uh, patient, so prevent a healthy person from having uh, UTI. So mucopolysaccharides, I mean, they increase the difficulty of bacterial penetration in mucosal IgA, and in men, prostatic secretion contains bactericidal zinc and urethra is longer. So in female, urethra is short, small, and uh, that is a high risk of uh, getting infection. But in males, urethra is stronger and leading to low risk of uh, getting urethral infection. So these are the normal innate host defense mechanism that prevents the patient from having UTI, especially urine and your mucosal immunity. What, what are the factors that result in compromised normal host defense mechanism of the bacteria colonization? And uh, uh, what are the important steps in pathogen of UTI? So if you look at the Hydrogenic factors like uh, if a uh, patient is being catheterized in an aseptic condition, and you can have indwelling catheters, antibiotics used, and spermicides. These are the drugs which can lead to uh, colonization of the urinary tract and leading to urinary tract infection. Behavior some people who have a dysfunctional uh, voiding and frequent or recent uh, such intercourse, like especially the multiple partners, the being, they have a high risk of uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, especially UTI. And another anatomical problem, which is uh, common in children, that is a vasoconstrictor reflux. That is uh, your urinary bladder and your sphincter is uh, letting the blood, uh, sorry, urine to the reflux into the upper urinary tract and that can lead to a, a problem with the urinary tract infection. So female sex with small urethra and pregnancy can be a respiratory factor for having UTI. Genetic familial tendency and uh, susceptible, you know, uh, uh, epithelial cells and vaginal mucus properties. So these are the some genetic factors which can lead to a uh, high risk of getting UTI. So if hydrogenic, some drugs, then anatomical and the vesicular uh, flux is very, very important. And uh, sometimes uh, behavior like uh, voiding dysfunction and uh, multiple uh, sexual partners that can be a source of infection and familial tendency or sometimes the general mucus properties that precipitate the, uh, especially in people. People who are diabetic in pregnancy that can have a high risk of uh, UTI. Okay, so first we talk about the urethritis. So, urinary tract infection, especially when there is a low urinary tract infection, that can uh, be a part of uh, urethral inflammation. So, infection of the urethra with bacteria occurs in organisms that gain excess it into uh, uh, chronically colonized the numerous periurethral glands in the bulbus and the endless portion of the urethral urethra in the entire female urethra. So this is the, uh, once you have an inf uh, infection of the urethra, that can lead to a, a uh, urethritis, and especially the sexually transmitted pathogens, especially the chlamydia, trichomatis, hysteria, gonorrhea, and herpes simplex virus are common in both sexes. So these are the common sexually transmitted diseases and uh, uh, other infections that uh, can colonize and uh, the periurethral glands 
in the bulbous and pendulous portion of the male urethra and leading to entire infection of the urinary tract. If we look at the white blood cells here, these are the bacteria or the, uh, in the uh, urethral uh, infection. Now, what is cystitis? So cystitis, once you have a urethritis, and then you can have a cystitis infection, sending infection of the uh, urinary bladder. So that is the infection of the bladder. It is a common in women in whom causes or in cases of uncomplete cystitis and usually preceded by sexual intercourse because of the small uterine females and they have a high risk to get a cystitis that is a, a honeymoon cystitis that is a very common in the newly uh, married couple with the uh, high risk of uh, uteritis and cystitis in and bacterial infection of the bladder is usually complicated and usually complicated means that they have some underlying uh, uh, structure or function abnormality either there is a problem with this uh, uh, either they have a urethral structure or some other uh, anatomical problem in males that can lead to a risk of infection and once you have a urethritis cystitis and then you can have ascending infection in the urethra to the prostate and secondary to the sometimes urethral instrumentation or uh, uh, catheterization so more common, most common cause of rectal cystitis in men is chronic bacterial prostatitis. So prostate gland can get uh, infected in males and can be a source of uh, infection in the uh, unit tract uh, and can lead to a prostatitis and leading to a cystitis and some kind ascending infection through the both urethra to the kidneys leading to pyelonephritis. So one of the cystoscopic view of the urinary bladder, if we look at the uh, uh, scattered inflammatory lesion, these are the ones you have a cystitis, you can have inflammatory lesion in the urinary bladder. These are the small inflammatory lesions in the urinary bladder that can lead to a, a, a picture when you uh, do a cystoscopy in uh, uh, cystitis. Then we can have a Acquired urethral syndrome that is a patient who have, uh, uh, especially in women, uh, it is a syndrome involving dysuria, frequency, and polyuria, uh, which uh, does resemble the cystitis. So, this is the acute urethral syndrome when uh, uh, a female gets infection. She can have uh, dysuria, frequency, urgency, pyuria and burning nutrition. However, in acute uterus syndrome, unlike uh, cystitis, the routine cultures are usually negative and show colonic cultures that are lower than, that, than the bacteria criteria for the regimen of the bacteria system. So basically, if you have a symptoms of dysuria, frequency, urgency, pyuria, and uh, uh, you have a burning nutrition, then the key account may be low as far as the diagnosis is concerned and the patient should be considered as having uh, uh, urethritis or cystitis. So urethritis is a possible cause because causality agents include chlamydia, tachymotis, and uh, uh, ureplasma, uh, ureolytical, and which can be detected on, uh, which are not detected in routine uh, urine culture. So this is the uh, important part to be considered in females for uh, culture and sensitivity of urine is negative but there is possibility that they can have a, a, a infection like chlamydia and uriplasma uh, uralyticum that is the source of infection and culture are usually negative and the patient are usually uh, ignored because the culture is negative but patient is still has a symptomatic they are not given the proper treatment and that can lead to complications like they can have sending infection leading to pyelonephritis. So symptoms of urinary tract infection as you have a burning maturation, dysuria, frequency and pyuria passes there and if uh, cultures are negative then you should think about the uh, other possibilities like lame idea and the uh, uriplasma related to now, the uh, acute, uh, you can uh, think about the bacteria and ascending infection. Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic bacteria is 
this is the symptomatic by uh, acute uterus syndrome and this is the asymptom symptomatic bacteria absence of uti signs or symptoms in patients who are urine culture uh, satisfy criteria for uti so in this criteria patient was symptomatic but unable to grow the bacteria on culture and sensitivity but they can have other infection like chlamydia and e plasma and this is the condition when patient are asymptomatic but having infection so this is a even worse form of a patient who can have bacteremia and uh, they are high risk patient and should be screened for urine uh, uh, cultures so absence of uti signs either uh, in the form of uh, Bunny mutation, dysuria, urgency, frequency. Patient whose urine cultures satisfy the criteria for UTI. So no symptoms, but the presence of bacteria. Uh, 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 so pyuria may or may not be present, but patient uh, have uh, evidence of uh, uh, infection. They have a, a culture which is positive. So because these patients are asymptomatic. Such a bacteria is found mainly with a high risk patient and are screened, and uh, they have a urine culture should be done for other reasons. So, screening patient for asymptomatic bacteria is indicated for those at risk of complications of bacteria in untreated. So, such patient to <coughs> pregnancy, especially pregnant women, <coughs> can have asymptomatic pyuria, asymptomatic urinary tract infection, and these are the patients who have a high risk of getting urinary tract complication. So pregnant women, especially they are checked at 12 to 16 week gestation for the first uh, prenatal visit. And patients who have had a kidney transplant within the previous six months, young children with the gross uh, uh, ureter ur 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 reflux. And so these are the four categories. These are the patients who are asymptomatic but can have uh, 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 Urinary tract infection, especially women between 12 and 16 weeks of gestation, people who have a renal transplant in the last six months, and young children who have a urinary reflux. And before certain invasive uh, gastrointestinal procedures that can cause to mucosal bleeding. So these are the patients who have a, uh, who are asymptomatic, but uh, they have a UTI, and these are the usually seen for having urinary tract infection. Acute urethral syndrome, as told you, can be uh, okay. Now you can have uh, the acute urethral syndrome. After the women who have dysuria and uh, asymmetric bacteria. And now we have a certain patient, especially the post the woman, patient with uh, controlled diabetes, patient with uh, ongoing use of urinary tract uh, foreign objects such as stents, the frost tubes, and individual catheters are often have a persistent asymptomatic bacteria and sometimes pyuria. So these are the patients who have a high risk of uh, getting bacteria infection, but they are asymptomatic. They can have a, a complications of uh, pyelonephritis and human renal damage. So these are the patients who are asymptomatic but should not be uh, routinely uh, looked at because they are at low risk. So in patients with indwelling catheter, this is a very important point. In patients with indwelling catheter, treatment of asymptomatic bacteria usually fails to clear the bacteria and only leads to development of antibiotic resistant organism. So in uh, patients who are having stroke, you can see their uh, urine being uh, cloudy and uh, it is stained. So it is not necessary, it is a pus. It can be uh, uh, it, uh, can be just a uh, bacteria, but can be no infection. So acute pyelonephritis. If you start from the urethra, then you have a cystitis, urethritis, cystitis, and uh, urethritis, and then ascending. Pyelonephritis. So this is a very critical uh, phase of the urinary tract infection. Then you have a ascending infection leading to uh, renal parenchyma itself. That is the infection of the renal kidney parenchyma. In women, about 20% of women require the kidney are due to pyelonephritis. 
So pilot refractor is uncommon and then the normal human refractor is the patient who are uncomplicated host. But it is uh, more common in patients who are complicated hosts. They have an autonomical or some functional abnormality of the urinary tract. The cause is commonly due to ascension of the bacteria through the urinary tract. So, as we already discussed, this is the ascension of the bacteria. Which uh, this is the ascension of the bacteria which takes place, and uh, 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 infection uh, started from the urethra to cystitis, then urethritis, and then you can have a uh, bacterial uh, infection of the renal parenchyma itself leading to pyelonephritis. So same is the patient who have uh, 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 acute pyelonephritis. These are the patients who have uh, uh, some uh, infection. Other there is a, some uh, 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 in uncomplicated un patient they, they have a normal urinary tract, but it is more to me in complicated patient with ascension of uh, infection. So obstruction predisposes to pyelonephritis. Most women with pyelonephritis have no demonstrable functional or not good sex. So this is another point. Women are the high risk of getting <coughs> UTI because of their anatomical uh, uh, small uh, ultra and the high risk of getting uh, uh, UTI. In men, pyelonephritis is always due to some functional or anatomical defects. So in uh, males, it is really a complicated cases which have some functional or anatomical defects. So cystitis alone or anatomical defects may cause a reflux. That is, the, in children, it is very common to have a vasectoreutotetic reflux and they can have uh, ascending uh, pyelonephritis. That is, some bacteria ascension is greatly enhanced when urethral peristalsis is inhibited. So urethral peristalsis which takes uh, uh, urine flow, maintains the urine flow from the kidney to the bladder, that is uh, impaired and uh, if that is impaired that can lead to ascending infection, ascension of uh, infection can lead to pyelonephritis. So if you look at the acute pyelonephritis, there is a common in young uh, girls and pregnant women after bladder catheterization. If so, someone has some uh, catheterization, some uh, instrumentation, these are the young girls and women have a high risk of getting ascending infection uh, leading to pyelonephritis. So pyelonephritis is caused by hematoma. Other source of infection is hematogenous threat, which is particularly characteristic of virulent organisms, especially gram negative septicemia, patients with have high bacteria can lead to pyelonephritis. Peptidine necrosis may be evident in acute pyelonephritis associated with diabetes, obstruction, uh, sickle cell disease, pyelonephritis and renal transplant and pyelonephritis due to candidacy and analgesic nephropathy. So, so these are the causes of papillary necrosis. Papilla get to necrosis and uh, you have a high risk infection especially in people who are uh, diabetic and uh, who have a sickle cell anemia who have pyelonephritis in the uh, uh, in, uh, renal uh, transplant and uh, people who have a, a fungal infection like candidiasis and disease nephropathy so if we look at the bacterial colonization ascension the infection E. coli and parapocus, and then you can have a prostatic infection leading to prostatic prostate hypertrophy, bacteria invasion, and aggravation by the catheterization. And you can have the problem with vesico uh, uh, ureter junction. So, these are the precipitate defects that can lead to a uh, high risk of getting infection. And uh, people uh, who are having poorly functioning vesico ureter function that a direct ureter reflux can lead to a high risk of infection here and this is the vesico ureter reflux can lead to ascending infection and internal intrarenal reflux or urine leading to hydronephrosis capillary necrosis and you can have the uh, uh, damage to the kidney by ascending infection leading to pyelonephritis so this is a very good view of uh, uh, having the ascension of infection, starting from the uh, lower rest uh, uh, renal tract, especially children and uh, uh, 
females and in pregnancy if they have underlying vesico ureter uh, reflux and uh, that can lead to ascending infection in uh, uh, causing the uh, uh, reflux ascending infection leading to hydronephrosis and peplin necrosis and hyaluronephritis so what are the complications of urinary tract infection? So the recurrent number first is a recurrent infection, especially in women who experience two or more UTI in a six months period or four or more within a year. So this is the criteria of urinary tract infection. We had two or more episodes in six months or four or more within a year. And the permanent kidney damage from an acute or chronic infection like pyelonephritis due to untreated UTI is a one of the worst manifestation and complication of uh, UTI is increased this in pregnant women of uh, uh, delivering low birth late and premature infants and uh, urethral narrowing stitches in men from recurrent urethritis uh, especially in secondary to gonococcal infection that could such a transmitted infection can have a stricture in the urethra and males are high risk of getting infection and sepsis is a potentially life-threatening complication of infection especially uh, uh, when a patient is having gram negative septicemia especially E. coli they can lead to uh, hematogenic spread of uh, infection leading to uh, ascending infection of the renal tract or even leading to pyelonephritis with renal damage so these are the common complications if you have a chronic infection if, uh, if you have a uh, permanent kidney can lead to permanent kidney damage or especially people who have some instrumentation or some stitching uh, in the urethra or they can have a, a, a sending infection and especially people who are uh, immune compromised diabetic and they have some structure or function abnormality structure abnormality means they have some renal calculi they can have uh, renal stricture they can lead to uh, stagnation of the urine leading to hydronephrosis and leading to pyelonephritis and infection and people who have a vesico urethral reflux like functional abnormality loss of uh, normal uh, peristalsis of the ureters that can lead to ascending infection and pyelonephritis so sepsis septicemia or sepsis itself uh, due to e coli or other bacteria can lead to uh, pyelonephritis and uh, uh, and renal uh, damage so what are the symptoms okay if patient have urethritis uh, prostatitis cystitis and the uh, urethritis leading to pyelonephritis. So, what are the usually uh, symptomatology of patients who have UTI? So, common uh, complaint is fever associated with chills and rigor. If patients have uh, high infection, can lead to chills and rigor, recurrent voiding of urine, dysuria, urgency, frequency, burning situation, oleic urea, hematuria, even blood in the urine can be. Uh, Presenting symptoms of a UTI, severe UTI, suprapubic pain, sometimes patients have suprapubic pain and lower abdominal pain. So these are the common manifestations and symptoms of patients who have underlying urinary tract infection, whether they have uh, some urinary urgency, frequency, uh, dysuria, or burning maturation, and sometimes hematuria and lower abdominal pain. Associated symptoms, patients may have nausea, vomiting, malaise, and loss of appetite, may have pallor. If we look at the anatomical structural infection like urethritis, the patient will have a discomfort in voiding, dysuria, urgency, and frequency of urine. And the patient will have uh, burning maturation because of the urethral infection, and patient will have uh, urgency and uh, frequency and dysuria. If you have a cystitis, patient again can have uh, dysuria, urgency, frequency of urination and pelvic discomfort, especially low abdominal pain. If you have cystitis, you can have a low abdominal pain because of uh, uh, cystitis and patient will have pyuria, rather will have a, a frequency of urine. Hemorrhagic cystitis is another variety which can lead to uh, uh, hemorrhage within the uh, bladder itself due to hematuria and visible blood in the urine and irritating it's very very irritating uh, uh, dysuria and burning maturation pyelonephritis is a more advanced form of infection especially with the involvement of the renal parenchyma 
that is the invasive nature, suprapubic, endonous, and fever and tears, very patient very toxic, very toxic patient with the pyelonephritis, having the fever, the chills and rigors, and there will be lymphocytosis, there will be white cells in the urine, white cells passed in the urine, and patient may have a backache pain. So backache, nausea, vomiting, and patient may have uh, leading to sepsis, septic shock, and even can go into a, a, a renal failure and patient can die of uh, uh, acute pyelonephritis. So this is a very, very serious uh, condition, sending infection, urethritis, cystitis, leading to pyelonephritis. So if you look at the history, patient may have uh, 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 sick contact, history of uh, contact, history of uh, uh, water activity and uh, food intake, history of uh, spermicide use, and past medical history may have history of previous admission to the uh, same condition. Previous patient may have a structure formation, some individual capture, or some uh, other urogenital uh, uh, instrumentation. History of obstruction like calculi, history of capture use, and history of uh, diabetes and HIV. So these are the best factors in the history that can be a, a, a very important uh, to see. They are present, patient can have UTI. Past medical history and procedure instrument involving the urinary tract. So, symptomology and history it is very, very important and the local examination uh, of the patient. If uh, we look at the physical examination, patient will be ill looking patient with the fevers and chigers, fever and chills and rigors, abdominal pain, there may be lower abdominal tenderness, even suprapubic tenderness may be uh, there because of the uh, uh, cystitis and uh, posterior renal punch. This is the postovertebral angle of, uh, uh, you can put a uh, fist there and you can very uh, press the area, you will have a posterior renal punch. The standard bladder may be there because of the renal structure or obstruction and you can have the uh, distended bladder and uh, uh, you can have uh, Postovertebral area tenderness that is the in case of positive renal punch with the patient having phylonephritis. While urethral discharge, sometimes you can see the pus in the urethra, and especially patients who have a uh, septic transmitted diseases, they have a urethral uh, urethritis with the urethral discharge. And tender prostate on examination can be a, one of the manifestations when you clinically examine the patient. What are the investigations? So we suspect the disease, take a good history, do a clinical examination, and uh, uh, you will go for investigation. Based on investigation, you will go for CDC to see the leukocyte count, rectal leukocytosis, CRP, ESR may be raised. Urine analysis would uh, respect your leukocyte acid, nitrites, more likely gum, active rod, WBC may be present, and RBC may be present. So if you have a by urea with the uh, WBC, RBC, and all these things are there. While during culture, you go for during culture and sensitivity to look for the underlying uh, uh, like specific infection, and uh, you will go for a positive during culture, E. coli, especially staph, uh, proteus, uh, rabelis, and klebsiella, and enterococcus. So, these are the common urine culture and sensitive bacteria which are looked for. While to go for urea creatinine, uh, check for the renal function test and uh, you go for radiological examination like you can go for ultrasound, you can go for HUB examination for renal calculi or you can go for IVB and nutrition system is uh, nutrition system you can have to see the, if there is a uh, urinary cycle is a flux is uh, there and uh, transsectal ultrasound biopsy and the MRI and CD scan. This is a simple KUB. You see the uh, renal calculus there in the ureter and uh, you can have uh, IVP showing hydronephrosis, there is a dilated uh, kidney and you can have uh, uh, a loss of uh, 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 some uh, dilatation in the uh, uh, hydronephrosis and this is the IVP you can see the anatomical structure of the uh, urinary tract this is the how the IVP is done intravenous contrast is given 
and then at different times you this contrast is being filtered to the kidneys and you can see it is being seen in uh, half hour the exercises are being done for uh, four hours and you can see the dye being uh, filtered to the kidneys and then uh, passed in the urine. Okay, I'm sorry, there was some uh, technical uh, problem, and uh, we can see the IP how IVP is done. And uh, this is the uh, simple KUB with IVP. And uh, what is the differential diagnosis? We can see patients with uh, fever, chills, and rigors, and suspicion of UVI. So it may be a few polyol factors, cystitis, urethritis, epiprostitis, and PID. So what are the treatments? So indication for uh, hospital admission when patient is very sick, patients having uh, severely evidence of uh, uh, septicemia with the complications and concern about the compliance, failure to respond to outpatient department and patient cannot take oral medication or oral hydration is required because of underlying vomiting, dehydration and patient required uh, uh, IV antibiotics. So this is the common uh, strategy to plan for E. coli and the most common cause of bacteria, especially E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, Staph, and Staphylococcus in the So, preferred suggested treatment is nitrofurantoin 50 mg 
six hourly for three days. And the alternative is amoxicillin, levolenic acid, or cefiroxine. And the patient can have a choice depending on the uh, culture and sensitivity. And nitrofurantoin should be used with caution, especially in elderly, to have a reduced GFR less than 40. Patient with acute cystitis pregnancy is very, very important, especially patients who are between 12 and 16 weeks pregnancy. They can have high risk of infection. And in that case, nitrofurantoin is safe to be used and cefiroxine, and cephalexine, and amoxicillin. Plain and can be used. Uh, a trimethoprim that is in the form of septron should be avoided in pregnancy. Like patients who have uh, uh, infection, like uh, uh, they have acute uncontrolled pyelonephritis, means patients have acute kidney benefit infection, especially because of E. coli and the protease uh, uh, and pseudomonas, they are given ciprofloxacin 500 milligram twice a day for seven days and uh, uh, you can have IV as if patient is unable to take total by 400 milligrams that IV other possibility for uh, patient who require hospitalization and patient are septic they are very sick patient and uh, dehydrated and some clean and they can even set strikes on one to two grams you need two grams uh, twice a day for 14 days and uh, uh, with no monoglycoside, you can add on a monoglycoside like pentamycin or other drug. And if patient is allergic to this drug, amoxicillin is a level in one to two gram uh, IV eight hours before two weeks. And alternative is uh, amoxicillin with level in acid or amoxicillin IV BD for seven days. The choice of agent should be based on the culture and sensitivity. So this is very, very important to start the patient on broad spectrum antibiotic with suspicion of most likely of reason like E. coli, enterofactor, uh, proteus, and pseudomonize. We start this process, get the culture done, and uh, change the antibiotic, whether they are sensitive to uh, ciprofloxacin, saprazone, or uh, amoxicillin level in case, or some other like third generation meronym and fourth generation antibiotic to so choose the patient most likely a drug which are sensitive to a coli and aromactor proteins and pseudomonas and change the antibiotic according to your culture and sensitivity so because first uh, 48 hours very very important you should start and pick your antibiotic and change according to culture and sensitivity the acute palinophritis in pregnancy cefiroxin is uh, safe than 50 uh, Exam, IV, HRP, and uh, a patient who have uh, other uh, alternative can be given a uh, level in acid. Then you have a bladder if patient is on uh, with urinary bladder uh, catheterization. So antibiotics are usually not recommended for asymptomatic by urea and uh, bacteria. And uh, better is uh, you change the catheter and uh, only consider antibiotic. Uh, treatment if bacteria persists 48 hours after catheter removal. So patients who have stroke long-standing uh, uh, catheter in situ, they can uh, be a uh, candidate for infection. But patients uh, uh, have an asymptomatic, asymptomatic bacteria should be have a change of catheter and see if they have persistent by urea, then they, they can be started on antibiotics. And other sporting measures, especially patients who have uh, uh, discomfort and antibiotics required, uh, you need to treat the fever by uh, giving antibiotics. Pain can be treated by analgesics, and plenty of water should be given, especially patients who are admitted can be given IV fluids, and uh, uh, sometimes the heating pad can be used to minimize the bladder pressure. And cranberry juices are very, very effective in reducing the. Uh, uh, infection or fighting the uh, uh, against the infection so follow up all patients with the uti should perform urine analysis to ensure that causative agent has been eradicated and culture uh, urine should be obtained after one to two weeks and to see there is a complete eradication of the infection and uh, these are the patients who have a recurrent infection delayed or incomplete response to appropriate antibiotic therapy early recurrence of infection should be looked in
So thank you very much. Basically, uh, UTI is very bad infection. Either it is a urethritis, cystitis, ascending infection, or fungal infection, but need to be looked in the underlying compromised state of the patient, and if they have any structure or functional abnormality, and treat it timely to prevent the having complication like the uh, septicemia, shock, and renal failure. So thank you very much. Okay, wish you all the best. Allah. Hafiz.